Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mama, you got any more safety pins? Claudia, take the pins out of your mouth. They're in the little box on top of the dresser. My hands are full. I suppose that means I'll have to come in and give them to you. You doing anything else? Would it matter? Mm. All right, here I am at your service. Thank you. You've got two pins. What do you want with more? I am experimenting. You are, eh? I think that with a couple of extra pins, I can get his shirt held down neatly. Look, Claudia, babies have been pinned oh. into diapers for centuries. Two pins have always been enough. Mom, are you trying to stop the wheels of progress? No, but I'm against fruitless experiments. Oh, I suppose that's what every genius is told when he tried to find a new way to do old things. Hey, keep still, Skeezy. Hey, Mama, where are you going? Does it take two of us to pin on one diaper? I thought you'd be interested in watching how skillful I've become. Now, come here, now, Snookum Dog. Roll you over on your tummy. Roll is right. He's a fat little thing. You know, I don't know what's supposed to be so beautiful about babies. If I walked around with rolls of fat where he has them, no one would look at me twice. <laughs> on a baby, everybody makes a big fuss. Don't complain as long as he's healthy. He's very handsome, too. Oh. I refuse to talk about it anymore, and he doesn't care what you think. He knows his grandmother loves him, doesn't he? He hasn't said a word. When are you going to learn to talk, funny face? Aren't you ever satisfied, Claudia? Mm, I'm satisfied. So satisfied, I'm afraid to even think about it. Now, Snookums, you're all pinned up. Claudia, this has got to stop. What has? Calling that child Snookums. Skeezix and funny face. It's time we called him something. I'm calling him lots of things. Well, that's right what on. I mean. Poor child, he'll get shell shock. Oh. Skeezix, what a name. We've discussed a name for him. Why, just last night, it... But it's not as easy as it sounds, Mom. Well, other people managed to find one. We are not other people. Besides, I'd rather not call him anything than call him by the wrong name. No I? name would be wrong compared to what he's been hearing. Oh, poor little Scoogums. Grandma says you've got to have a name. What name would you like? Oh, I don't think anybody would be able to spell that. The minute David comes home, I'm going to see that he takes the bull by the horns. You can't decide just like that, Mama. Like what? Just like that. We've got to think about it more. You have been thinking about it for weeks. If you don't make up your minds just like that, you never will. Why, that child will get an inferiority complex growing up without a name. He already has Norton. What's the matter with that? Norton. Oh, Mama. I hope he'll wear it well and do it justice. He will. But he has to have a front half, too. <laughs> so let me know when you've decided. I'll keep dinner waiting. It's your idea, so you have to help us. It's your son, so you have to decide. Hello, hello. Mr. Norton Sr., come in, come in, come in. We were just talking to you about Junior. Oh, no? where are you? Where do you think we are? I don't know. Just where I think you are, I suppose. Keeping that child from getting a decent day's sleep. Oh. Hello, all. Hello, you all. Am I going to get a kiss? I thought you were telling me last night it's not sanitary to kiss. That is babies. Oh, you're different. Very, so kiss me and shut up. Hello, Mother, before I go down for the third time. <laughs> Not one greeting for your son, David. Hiya, ski boy. How you doing? He's doing fine. And, David, listen, before you do anything else, there's something Mama says you have to do. Something else I have to do? Mm -hmm. It's much more important than kissing Claudia. Ooh. More important to Mama, but not to me, darling. I'm going to disinherit that grandson of mine if you don't give him a name this minute. Well, what does Fatty need a name oh! for? For exactly that reason. Fatty? Terrible, my grandson. You see, David, Mom is getting neurotic on the subject. Oh, he won't answer to his name for years, so what's the hurry? It's the principle of the thing. Well, give him a principle, Claudia. Yes, that's the principal thing. <laughs> Where's your hat, David? I'll cut up lots of little pieces of paper and put a name on each, and you can pick one out. Say, that's a good way to do it, seeing as what we decide not to call him is going to stay with him for his whole life. Say, it is a responsibility, isn't it? What's in a name? A rose by any other name. Well, that's fine for flowers, but not for little boys. I'm not going to budge until we've dubbed him. Say, Mama, how did I happen to be called Claudia? I don't know. You just looked like a Claudia when you were born. What's a Claudia look like? Like you. You're a big help. I have a better idea. A really modern, progressive idea. 
Now, why don't we wait until he grows up? Then, when he sees for himself what he's like, he can choose a name for himself. Hmm? What are we supposed to call him t- till then? Blank. Mr. Blank Norton. Yep, it's all right with me. Very oh, good. You two, you're impossible. <laughs> All right, if you won't help, I'll decide all by myself. Well, do we have to do it this this minute? This minute, before we leave the room. And we're going to choose it right in front of him, too. Oh, much more accurate with the subject present. Uh, may I sit down? Pull up a bed, David. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll never call him by his name anyway. We won't? Well, I won't. But I will. We'll see. Look at him, he's so microscopic. Oh, we not. Any name we give him will be too much for him. Well... Let's try giving him a small name. Then he'll grow up to be big and his name will be too small for him. You make it sound so complicated. Oh, it is, it is. Can't we find a nice medium-sized name? You know, sir, to keep one foot on each side of the road. Compromise. Compromise. Mm. No, no, I don't like fancy names. No, neither do I. I don't think he's going to be a very fancy little boy. He better not be. Let's give him a name that'll sort of give him something to sort of live up to. You know, a name that has character. Hmm? Well, name one. How's George? George? Mm Mm-hmm. For him? No, no, George is not for him. How do you know? He isn't anything yet. What are Georges like, David? Well, by George, would you mind passing me my monocle, old boy? I'll have another (laughs) cup of tea. (laughs) I know some very nice Georges. I knew a George once who was a truck driver. Truck driver? No, no son of mine would be called George Norton, no. I see what you mean. Uh, let's see, what about, um, Henry? Henry? Henry Norton. You want him to grow up to be bald and wear rimless glasses and have braces on his teeth when he's seven? But I knew a nice Henry once. I don't think your son looks like a Henry either. What does he look like if you're so smart? Puddinhead. Oh, fine, fine, call him Puddinhead. I, you know, I rather like that. Puddinhead Norton. Mm-hmm. Mm, has a very nice ring to it. P.H. Norton. <laughs> My hair is rapidly turning white, clear through. Well, that. let's let's try and pick a name with a little romance. Oh, lots of romance. Oh. Such as? Uh, Ravenall. Uh, young uh, Ravenall Norton. How does that sound? Oh, if I had a son called Ravenall, he'd have to marry a girl called Georgiana. And I don't think I could bear to have a daughter-in-law called Georgiana. But if he were called Ravenall, he could swing a cane, wear a top hat, and be ever so gallant to weed <gasps> down upon the street. Oh, that might not be such a bad idea after all. David, be serious. In two minutes, I have to put dinner on. Well, can't we sleep on it? On what? On dinner? <laughs> oh, a comedian in the house. Yes. We've been sleeping on it long enough. So long that we've gone to sleep on the job. We have to call him something. Mama's right. How's, um, Edward? Edward who? Another comedian in the house. (laughs) Move over, David. I want to be the end man. (laughs) Edward's a nice, simple man. No, there's not enough character. No bones in it. Bones? Well, he doesn't have any bones. Look at him. (laughs) He has no muscles either. How about a muscular name? You know, there's something to say for having girls. Girls' names are prettier. Well, if you think you're going to foist a pretty name on my son, you're tooting up the wrong tree. I'm not tooting up any tree, but I don't like Edward Norton. Eddie Norton. Ed Norton? No, doesn't sound right. What's the matter with David? Nothing's the matter with David. Except David says he won't have his son called after him. Why not? It gets much too complicated. My son has a right to his own name. I'm not going to have him go through his life being called Junior. His life is own to live. He'll have to make his own name mean something, too. That's very humble of you, David. Oh, not at all. Very conceited. This boy has to stand on his own two feet. He's not going to get by on his father's reputation. What reputation? Bad reputation. Well, I'm glad you straightened that out. Oh, this is all very well and good, but we're not getting any place. Well, can't we get into the dining room? I'm hungry. And so is your son hungry for a name. Well, there's Percival, Rupert, Egbert, oh. Albert, <laughs> Arnold, Ambrose, Archibald. And that's all for the A's. Chop off their heads. Then there's Bertram, Bernard, Barney. That's all for the B's. Then there's Charles. <laughs> no. I know, I know. What do you know? John. Oh, I love John. But I hate Jack, and all Johns are Jacks. Well, ours doesn't have to be. John. John Norton. It's not bad. How do you like John Norton, Scoogums? You there, sleepy face? He doesn't like John. How's William? Oh, all Williams are Bills. I don't like William, but I love Bill. Bill. Silly Billy. hmm? They might call him Willie. Oh, no son of mine shall be called Willie. Willie Nilly. I still think we ought to to let him decide in years to come. No dinner until you decide. The right name just doesn't hit us between the eyes. Just too bad. 
What about Spud or Bud or Pud? No, 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 no. What about Mickey or Ricky or Mike? Oh, he is not going to have freckles. I forbid it. He's not going to have a name at this rate. David, don't you feel anything hitting you between the eyes? Only the back of my hand. Oh, I'm getting hungry. (laughs) Now, listen, you two. Go on, come on. Let's quit kidding. We know it's all settled. That is, at least, I know. You do? I do. It's been settled for years and years and years. It has? If you'd stop and think for a minute, Mrs. Norton, you'd know your son's name as well as I do. I would. Mm-hmm. Think, darling. I'm thinking. Claudia, you don't have to wrinkle up your face like that. It can't be such an effort. Well, darling? David, tell me. How do you like Robert? Mm-hmm. I've always liked Robert. There's nothing particularly the matter with Robert. He's nice. What about you, Mrs. Brown? Robert's a nice name. You bet it's a nice name. I hope my son can live up to it. He'll have a long ways to reach up. David, I'm getting suspicious. You are, Mrs. Brown? I just want to say, I just hope my son will grow up to be a, as fine a man as I'm sure Robert Brown was. I didn't know you knew. We'd be proud if you'd let us borrow the name of your husband, Mrs. Brown. Don't do this for me. We're not, Mama. We're doing it for us. For old sleepy face over there. Then it's all settled. And Robert, it is. Robert Norton. I like the way it sounds. Well, I like Bobby. It too. Bobby, what do you think about it? Well, speak up. Speak up, man. <laughs> He's so impressed with himself, he can't say anything. Oh, darling, you're so very sweet and thoughtful. Sweet? Hmm. I'm just looking for for the way to thank your mother and father for you. And for Bobby. Better boy, Skeezix. Oh, I beg your pardon, old man. Bobby, come to Daddy. Of course, I don't know firsthand, but I hear tell that trying on dresses in warm weather is one of the world's most trying occupations. No puns intended. Yet women have to buy dresses. Next time shopping is too much for you, just look around for that friendly red sign and pause for ice-cold Coca-Cola. There'll probably be a Coke cooler right around the corner waiting to help you shop refreshed. What do you think of David's choice of names, Mr. King? I think it's a very fine one, Mrs. Brown. Robert Norton. It was a lovely gesture on David's part to name my grandson after my husband. How much as David won't admit it, he's pretty proud of that boy of his. Well, he is his father. And much as he'll try not to act like his father, he'll end up just the same like all the rest of us. You think so? Oh, I even think that someday David will even end up with uh, a picture or ten or so in his wallet of Master Bobby Norton. I'll have to see that to believe it. Well, come around tomorrow, Mrs. Brown. I most certainly will. Till then, goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.